All right, like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. It's Netflix time. This movie's called The White Tiger. This ambitious driver for a rich Indian family uses his wit and cunning to escape from poverty and become an entrepreneur based on a best-selling novel. This movie just came out last week. It's about two hours long. An Indian drama, and yes, I will not even attempt to pronounce any of the names and butcher them. So let's just get right to it. Oh, and spoiler alert to the fucking max. It starts off with a scene with Bell Ram driving around with his employers and something crazy happens. But before we even get to that, let's get to how his story began before he became a boss. Now he lived in India. Now you have a rich side of India and a poor side of India. Guess what side he lived on? So he was pretty smart for his age growing up in the area that he grew up in. Yeah, the schooling there was beyond trash. It was mostly just him and his dad throughout his childhood. When he ended up getting sick, no doctors were in the area to help him and he eventually passed away. And he was also very poor too. Because of this, Balram wasn't able to go to school, but instead he had to work with his brother and his uh, grand grandma to work in the fields. He always referred to the poor being stuck in a rooster coop because all they're doing is just basically waiting to die. And because of their faith in their religion, most of the people there believed that. But when Balram got older, he obviously wanted something different, wanted something better for his life. He got a lot of his inspiration from this guy named Ashtrak. He's basically part of like one of the richest families in India. And because their family used to collect taxes in their community, Belram figured out something. He was trying to put his money together so he could become a driver for the family. It took a lot of ass kissing and traveling, but he was able to pull it off. This guy's like the family's right hand man. Trust me, he's a fucking jerk. They set up lodgings for him because he's the number two driver and right next to him is their number one driver. So they pretty much share the same room. Then Belram actually gets to meet Ashram's wife, Pinky. Who they say in this movie is from Brooklyn, New York, actually. They don't explain how they fully got together, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with money. But she's a good, kind-hearted soul. The elder and the bodyguard treat him like a servant all the damn time. Later in the day, his brother actually comes to visit him. You know, he drops off money to his brother so he could give it to the rest of the family. He doesn't feel like it at first, but he senses this life is changing Bell Ram for real. So Bell Ram is tired of being the number two driver. He wants to be number one. Now, his competition has been driving him for like 20 years. Now, the family hates Muslims. So Bell Ram follows him to a certain area and finds him going into a Ramadan temple. So there's the blackmail he can hang over his head. It's crazy. So the family meets up with this lady. We just call her Miss Validesh. She basically runs shit over top of them. But she's in a position of power without the corruption. So she's a good hearted soul. She does her best to keep them in line. And Pinky don't play that shit neither. So the next day, Bell Ram basically just blackmails the other driver. He says he hated to do it, but it's basically a doggy dog world out here in these streets. So now he's officially the only driver. They move to a different hotel suite to conduct business. He lives down in the basement with the other drivers. And that's basically his life for the time being. This guy verbally abuses him from time to time. Like I say, he's a fucking jerk. They do quote unquote business trips with high ranking officials. And then when the bodyguard goes away on business, Akash and Bell Ram start becoming close friends. Even though Bell Ram still looks at it like a servant and master relationship. He still takes the time with him to play video games and stuff. He still realizes that he's not there yet because, you know, he's still living under the bottom of the daggone apartment complex. As you can see by the lodgings, it's pretty fucked up. On a trip where Bell Ram is going back to see his grandma, Oshkosh and Pinky are along for the ride. He starts talking about certain roads and trees that they all pray to along each road that he's driving around. Which is total bullshit, so you can tell he's got like a sly streak in him. Once he's there, his brother gets to him in his homes talking about how they haven't sent them any money for like a couple months or whatever. Like that's his job to support the whole fucking family. Like grandma tells him they're going to rearrange another marriage for him in like another seven to eight months. But he's not trying to get married. He ain't trying to hear none of that shit right now. He's just trying to work and make himself a decent, honest living. Because he feels like this place is a trap and he's trying to get up out of his lifestyle. And he really wants to take his brother with him, but he knows he's never going to leave. So in this scene, once he gets back, Pinky talks to him about, you know, getting himself tightly groomed up and things of that nature. Then she tells him more about her backstory, too. So throughout all this, he feels like he has somebody that understands him, you know what I mean? So he takes her advice, you know, he gets some new clothes, gets some toothpaste, all that good stuff. He comes to the door looking like a new man. And because it's Pinky's birthday, they go out to celebrate. Here's where the situation gets fucked up. Pinky was to drive and she's been drinking. Oshkosh forces Belram to sit in the back because that's what she wants and it's like, wow. Some fucking negligence right there. I mean, Bell Ram didn't have no choice, but Oshkosh knew better than that. And they ended up hitting a random kid that jumped out in the middle of the street. Yeah, shit just got real. Pinky spazzing out at this point. Bell Ram was telling Oshkosh not to get back in the car. And they basically committed a hit and run. What in all of the fuck? So Bell Ram tells Akash, like, look, don't worry. I'm going to clean this mess up for you. I got you. I ain't saying shit. You already know what time it is. But then here comes the bullshit. Next day, he goes to the hotel. The bike all got this dumbass smile on his face. I'm like, what is he so happy to see him for? It smelled of fuckery, and Oshkosh knew something was up. You could tell by looking at his face. So now they try to treat him like family all of a sudden. They got this guy there, too, as a lawyer or agent or whoever the hell he's supposed to be to them. And they put in writing, in paper, saying that he's the one that hit the kid, that he was the one driving. 
because he's their driver and that's their scapegoat. It's like, oh. Yeah, they really care about you a lot, huh? Now, of course, Oz doesn't want them to do this, but he really doesn't have a say in the matter. And they forced Bell Ram to sign it, stating that he was the one that hit the kid. I'm like, wow. And after all that, they still verbally abuse him every day. They still treat him like a fucking servant. It's a fucked up situation. Pinky's the only one that speaks up and says, yo, fuck this shit, I'm done. After that, Bell Ram still goes to the train station to drop off his, his boss and his bodyguard. And he lets him know, hey, if you think about doing anything stupid, I still got that confession on paper in my pocket. Talk about having somebody by the balls. So at this point, he's beyond frustrated. So he goes back to a spot under the hotel, and guess who makes an appearance? Pinky shows up and asks him to drive her to an airport. So Pinky's going back to Brooklyn, but not before giving Baram an envelope, which basically had like four months worth of salary in it. Next day, Akash is looking for his wife. Bellaround tells her that he just uh, took her to the airport because he has to do what they say. He works for them. And they get into a fight. Two days gone by, Bellaround finds Akash is sitting there drunk. He tries getting his spirits up by telling his wife is going to be back. So he gets him uh, eating all types of his cuisines and stuff. They pray at his temple. The bodyguard comes back and tells Akash some bad news about Pinky wanting a divorce. So Akash's morale is down again and Bellaround was like, this bodyguard is causing fucking problems. And even after everything he's done to cover up these secrets, Bellaround still feels like he's going to eventually end up being replaced. So he starts getting extra money from his masters for stuff that he knows he doesn't need. He's selling like petrol oil. Trust me, he was doing all type of shit. So throughout the main of time, Bellaround is taking Oshkosh to make all these trips to the bank. And he's always carrying a red bag. So you know his red bag is carrying a ridiculous amount of money. Well, he finds out when he checks the bag when Oshkosh is not looking. So when Bellaround gets back to his tent, this little boy is just standing there. Apparently this little boy is his nephew and he has a note from the village. Which basically tells that the grandmother has not been happy. He hasn't sent the money in like seven months. And on top of that, they found a suitor for him to get married to. But with the moves he's making at this point, you can tell he don't give a fuck about none of that shit. So at this point, he's about to put some type of plan in place. He breaks a glass bottle and puts some incense in the car. And tells the little boy he should be gone by tomorrow because you could tell some shit about to jump off. Belron picks up Akash to go to the Sheraton for another drop off. He stops somewhere and makes an excuse coming up to it talking about some, something's wrong with a tire or something. He acts like he's going to go check on it, putting a glass bottle down in a certain spot. Akash goes out there to help him check on it. Then he jabs a broken glass bottle in the back of his neck. Slits the front of his throat and ends up killing him. Holy shit. He leaves him out there and he takes off with the bag of money. Finds a little boy, goes to the train station, hide out in a hotel for like a month, go to a police station of all places, and bribes the chief with a whole lot of money. But not all of it, of course. And before you knew it, invested in his own business, White Tiger Drivers. Yeah. And starts going by the name of his former employer, Ashok. Like, what? So he's running these businesses with his nephew right by his side. Now I know you're asking yourself, what about his family members? Like, did he not have that in the back of his mind? You know they're going to get some type of vengeance or something. Well, apparently he never looked back until he read in the newspaper that 17 villagers were murdered in a northern vill village. I was like, damn. All in all, I say this movie's off the chain. It's a hell of a watch, and I need y'all to check that out ASAP. What? The White Tiger on Netflix. Check it out. Like, click, and subscribe. Do all that. It's your boy, Sleek DZ, all the easy, mister. Skizzy, skizzy. Ow, big. Cute slogan.